Hi, everyone. So I'm really glad you came out. We were actually talking about how um, the title just, I mean, like, compared to all the other events, you just have the title and it just says, Open Government Data, What, Why, How? And you're like, hmm, I wonder how many people are going to show up without us trying to dazzle them. So um, thank you so much for coming. So my name is Kat Berlan. I am with uh, I'm one of the co-founding members of, um, of the French chapter of the Open Knowledge Foundation. So my background is that I am an information rights advocate. Uh, before working in open data, I was around the Canadian Bureau of Reportage Sans Frontières, Reporters Without Borders, and then moved on to the UN and helped build uh, the public information system for um, the agency that handles aviation. So um, over the past year, I have been spending, I'd say, like a non-trivial amount of time observing um, the uptake of the term open government data. And it's been explosive. Um, it's it's a huge thing. This time has finally come. And a good example, like three three names that I hear more and more are, um, are here today with us in the panel: um, Open Knowledge Foundation, Eta Lab, Democracy Ouverte. I'm going to let the speakers um, introduce themselves really quickly. Right. So uh, my name is Christian Willem. I'm a Danish, and I work for Open Knowledge Foundation as a community, man a community manager, uh, on one hand for our local group network, uh, and on the other hand uh, for our efforts in open government data. So I'm involved in a lot of the projects uh, that we uh, have in that area. Uh, my background is also rather diverse. Uh, I've been spending a few years um, co-founding and running a hackerspace slash co space in Denmark. Uh, I also run a record label for electronic music uh, uh, embracing sharing and using that as a way to build business models that are uh, relevant and works with the internet, not against it. So uh, I'm very much an uh, open everything uh, advocate altogether. Thanks. My name is Romain Lacombe, Sorry. and I'm I'm heading innovation uh, efforts and international. Um, projects as well for Etalab, which is the open government task force for the, for the French government. And among other other things, our main project is developing data.gouv.fr, which is the, the French, um, I guess, national open data platform. So as you can imagine, I'm, I'm a big fan of open data. I strongly believe that it's, it's um, one very powerful instrument to change how governments work and how all of us, I guess, in the collaborative consumption and collaborative um, action space can, can work together. And uh, I guess I'll, I'll be short, but hearing about your background, I uh, imagine we're all, in a way, um, bridgers between between cultures, right? Or trying to at least uh, build bridges between different cultures. And my background is both in uh, engineering and the technology side of things. Uh, I was lucky to spend um, more than two years launching a startup in Silicon Valley. Uh, very lucky as well to have been able to work on open data here in, in, in France in the French government. And one of the big aspects uh, that, that make uh, open data so special is the ability to bring down silos and, uh, and connect. Right? <laughs> Sorry, okay, so more about my very classic one. Uh, this is, this, this sounds, uh, yeah, it was the, the Nokia ad back in the day, right? Nokia connecting like, people. Oh my God, okay. So this is a perfect, perfect time to hand, hand the mic over. <laughs> Hi, I'm Simon uh, Pertuza. From uh, I'm part of the group uh, Democracy Ouvert. And uh, for me personally, I, I came in all of those ideas um, to the open source movement when I was a teenager. And I quickly think like, why you know, why the society is not like a lot of open source projects and things like that. And I think a lot of people now. Think that you know, have the same idea, and uh, at Democracy Ouvert, I, I was involved in one of the projects we have, like Parlement and Citoyen, where we try to, you know, uh, help politicians and think them uh, uh, working in more open way uh, is a good thing. There are some, and so we try to make tools for for them. With the Parlement Citoyen, we have like we will help other projects like manifestation. And yeah. We organize a group. We organize a group camp in this manifestation. Uh, which day? On Saturday. Right? Saturday, right? Saturday, like yeah. Saturday. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, great. So, um, is that the sound of the boat? <laughs> 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 That's the boat, right? Wow. Um, 
so, all right. <laughs> so everyone that's sitting with me on the panel is obviously very, very big um, on open data. We're all very excited about um, some of the things that are happening right now. Um, you got, you know, statistics, genes, or, or geodata. But um, before we get carried away with our sports of evangelization, I'm going to warn you this tends to happen quite a lot. Um, maybe we can start from the very beginning. So what is open government data? Christian, maybe you can help me out here. So it's not, I, I don't want to get like stuck up, stuck on semantics, okay? So, I mean, it's, it's actually, it's pretty ambiguous. It's not an easy question because are we talking about open data that's governmental in nature? Or are we talking, and then in that case, the emphasis is more on the technologies of open data. Or are we talking about the, the data of an open government? In that case, the emphasis is more on politics and transparency. So maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. Um, with the Open Knowledge Foundation, uh, on one hand, we've been um, working towards uh, uh, defining, of course, what uh, open data is in, 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 you know, in general and also open government data in specific. Um, running initiatives like uh, the open definition, etc., etc. But I think it's uh, worth pointing out that talking about open data in general, the focus needs to be on the open, not on the data. Um, and it's very much about people. Uh, I think that, that open government data is uh, actually uh, reaching out to citizens and uh, uh, wanting to empower your citizens to actually uh, have an active role in the governance uh, uh, and, and also to um, not only release the data, I mean it's one thing to release data and that's important, but it's even more important to use that data, to make it useful, to make sense of it. And, and, and that's perhaps the real challenge. Like right now we see how, how uh, open government data is quite, quite robust. And it's uh, you know on the agenda uh, on the very highest uh, EU level, etc. Um, so I guess you know what we need to do from here is basically figure out exactly how to make use of the data that's being made available, because that's where where we start to really um, get the value, the real value from 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 having uh, all these new resources available. So I would say people, um, people is the the, the people centric nature of open government data is what should be focused on. But, so, like in 2013, like maybe Simon, you can help me out with this one. Um, do you think that open data and open government have become somewhat interchangeable? I mean, do you feel like one can exist without the other? Can you have an open government without open data and vice versa? Um, yeah, no, I think like the, the data is just a representation, you know, of, uh, of, of what's happening behind. And yeah. If you want to have uh, an open government, you will have to, you know, show what's happening. So one way that like, is doing that, I think, is a pretty basic question. <laughs> okay. Um... Um, but I, I want to answer to what you said. I think um, we arrived to the quite the same conclusion. Like, okay, the data is are perhaps not that important. They are important. They are a key. Huh? But, but uh, with Parliament Citoyen, we actually not using that much open uh, data because there was not open data in, in, in France uh, available. So we we try to you know uh, make a project where people can collaborate. But it's a, it is exactly in the same spirit, you know, openness, transparency, and, and collaboration. I think that that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, so, I mean, the definition is kind of important because it, it um, defines a, a lot of the underlying theory of change between, like, we're talking about open data um, and government. So, um, Roman is with Adela, who said earlier, uh, the Prime Minister's Task Force for Open Government in France. And they've made some very large commitments, they moved ahead, they've invested. So, maybe you can tell me a little bit what. What is the what's the theory of change behind open data? I mean, what what, what is the promise basically? It's a very good very good question, and um, I guess talking about coming back to, to basics, to the origins um, of of this movement, um, and maybe trying to go behind the hype as well, because you're, you're right, this is a open data and open government data is a term that's been really played up over the last uh, the last while. Um, I think you could go back all the way to the, the promise of the first computer scientists. Um, and someone like um, I think Professor Lick Leiter, this guy in the 60s who 
started describing this this future vision of symbiosis between humans uh, and computers, right? And at a certain level, uh, when the capabilities of, of all the devices we carry about in terms of connectivity, in terms of distributed computing, in terms of sensors, uh, reach a certain level, every aspect, every sector of human endeavors uh, will be impacted by the potentialities of, of, of computing, right? And at a, at a, at a very basic level, um, open data is a way for government to promote um, these new tools, uh, these new levers of action that are available for all of us uh, to solve and to change the way we solve uh, the problems that our societies face. Um, and by that, and this is a very general statement, right? But by that, I mean that everything that enables us um, and, and enables the new uh, behaviors we observe online, all, all the, uh, um, the sort of collaborative consumption behaviors uh, that we're talking about uh, today, tomorrow, and, and with WeShareFest, uh, at, at a certain level, they could not happen without this new kind of, um, I guess, brain-machine symbiosis in a way, right? It's really about this infrastructure that's being built. Now, now, again, that's a very general statement, but at the heart of this lies one thing and one reality, which is that we are able to, um, I guess, to gather, to collect, to share, to compute, to analyze huge amounts of data that were absolutely un un even unthinkable or even a few years ago uh, in a way that empowers individual citizens to contribute to this mechanism. Um, so again, a very, very broad vision, but what's... Um, what brings those different models together is the fact that at some point data is collected and is being shared. And guess what? Historically, the role of government has been uh, to gather data and to collect, uh, to know um, how how its its you know different policies are faring, to know exactly the state of uh, I guess the state of the the, the country um, or or the the, the, the local um, authority um, the government is tasked with. And so, given that you're collecting this data. Given that it can have so much value for society in terms of uh, what it enables, um, and, and, and given that it's such a driver for potential innovation, uh, there is a, a first really um, obvious mechanism, which is that if government m makes this data available, then without even having some any sort of pre um, sort of prerequisites or, or, or any sort of uh, a prior. Um, knowledge or anticipation of what will happen, you will enable this sort of change and you will empower citizens uh, to develop to develop these new these new applications. Well, you know, put, put like that, it's, it's, it's clear as to why open government data is so exciting. I mean, you're, usually the promise is not just like an improvement of government, but we're talking in terms of like radical transformation, um, which is a really tall order. So, um, like, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but that brings me to a question that's been on my mind a lot, which is, how do you know it's working? What basically, what are the indicators of success to indicate that you know open government data really is making you know government better, making the world better, citizens better? Well, before before answering your question, I think one of the elements we need to keep in mind is um, that the, the the objectives um, and and even the the way governments. Um, Throughout the world, and not, not even talking about France specifically here, but uh, everything we've observed throughout the world uh, is still really in its infancy, meaning that this open government data policy is just getting started. Uh, and there are, for sure, different approaches which could lead to different ways of measuring success. Uh, but broadly speaking, we can think of three reasons why governments, uh, be, there, be, be they national governments or local governments throughout the world, uh, would want to improve uh, access to their uh, information, right, and open data and access to raw data in general. One first reason is transparency, and because the tools of data dissemination now exist, uh, because because you can make the information you collect much more useful to everyone, and because there's a, a notion of accountability uh, behind the publication of, of data sets that are timely, precise, uh, raw, and make things understandable by citizens and by the intermediaries such as drone lists who would be able to, to make sense of these data sets. Um, publishing open data on what the government is doing is a way to uh, make yourself accountable to citizens. So that, that's a big objective and, and that's an objective that France definitely, definitely shares. Sort of like a process objective, it's like... I, I, yeah, I guess, I, I, well, I'm not jumping to conclusions how you can measure this because this is a whole, a whole other question, but it means that as you start becoming more transparent, uh, you can you can observe the the, 
uh, the effects that this is this is having on uh, the way the democratic debate works, for example. And I think Parlement et Citoyen is a great example of what can be done, uh, leveraging these tools. Uh, now, there are two other objectives which, broadly speaking, could be, could be defined as one, which is, um, I guess, furthering innovation in all the, in the broadest uh, sense or the broadest meaning of the word, uh, meaning innovation inside government and innovation outside government with this really um, you know, partnership-based and, and open innovation-driven uh, mechanism whereby if I make data sets available uh, as the government, then uh, third parties, citizens, journalists, startups, nonprofits will be able to get hold of these data sets, uh, can find things that we may have ignored, um, are able to define new points of view on, on, on public policies, and also can build useful applications, services, uh, create value in the social sense for society, for a company, create jobs or create new services. Uh, and I guess this is really the broader, broader picture. So, Christian actually has a, he's probably out of the three, out of the four of us, I'd say he's the only person in, in the panel right now that has like, this amazing like wide angle view on what's going on because you're working with like all these networks, you're seeing everything that's happening from a distance. So, so with, like, based on everything that coman has been saying about all these uh, interesting projects and applications, like, What's the, what's the state of play right now? What are some of the cool things that you've seen that you can tell us about? Yeah, so uh, you mentioned it before that, you know, there's really a huge plus around opening up data altogether. And uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, if, you, if you know the, the, um, uh, the graph of, of hype, that you have this, uh, um, you know, the graph is growing uh, exponentially, uh, like, uh, you know, the informed optimism, and it reaches a, a point, like a tipping point, and starts going in the other direction towards the, the, the so-called trial of disillusionment. So you basically become dis disillusionment uh, nice with, with the whole thing because you don't feel, uh, is this even moving forward or was it just hype? And I think we're perhaps maybe going a little towards that, um, but at the same time, we're also uh, seeing all the being put forward that are helping bridge that trial. And uh, I think um, it, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of momentum is, is actually getting picked up. Do you have a favorite example you can tell us about, maybe? Uh, well, um, I, I, you see how, for instance, uh, like, like uh, Romain talked about uh, creating a transparency, people feel that they know more about what their governments are doing. Like, um, like at OKF, we run the open spending um, project, where you basically uh, get um, you know, insight into uh, government expenditures. And that is uh, you know, a concrete example of data being put out there being analyzed by citizens and, and being used for journalism, uh, being used for uh, improving uh, you know, s s uh, state budgets and, 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 and really uh, getting some concrete results from the data being open. And I think that, you know, putting data out there, any kind of data, uh, holds a promise because of the unpredictable ways that this can be used. You don't really necessarily as a government need to predict how they're going to be used. You put them out there and then through the vast creativity of, of, uh, of the population, of, 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 uh, of people altogether, then you, you, you have all these things, uh, being, uh, projects and ideas being brought forward, which is uh, a promise in itself, I think. Okay, so, um, I mean, I, I, really like, I really like this because I, I don't have a tech background at all. I'm like trying to code my own landing page right now and it's a complete disaster. So when I hear people in open data talking about how it's really more about the people, it's about the initiatives, that I, I find that incredibly helpful. We were all familiar with the term knowledge is power, right? And Rufus Pollock, who is the founder of Open Knowledge Foundation, always likes to say that, you know, we're not the Open Data Foundation, we're the Open Knowledge Foundation, and there's a reason behind that. It's because, it's because data per se, if it can't be transformed into knowledge, into insights, there's really, I mean, there's really not much you can do with it. It takes people, it takes a potential cocktail of political willpower, of citizen empowerment, of skills and talent, um, tools to take knowledge and make it, you know, maybe social change. So um, before I give the floor to the audience for questions, maybe I'm just going to ask each each speaker is can you can you maybe like tell me like what what's the major for you like what are the major challenges that we're facing right now in the open government data community and maybe what's missing to sort of try to solve that? Sure, I mean um, 
there are a lot of challenges, a lot of obstacles. Of course, a lot of them being the technical. Um, so some, you know, the importance of, of adopting standards and, and, and open protocols and all that, uh, that's, that's one thing. That's perhaps the, the boring part. Um, I think that the, the interesting part is uh, really continuing this change of mindset uh, which, uh, in essence, is what this is all about, and uh, not just in government, but also uh, in the general population, to realize that you know, as a citizen, you actually have a role. You 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 have uh, an increasing opportunity to actually change your own situation, but also change the way that your society is put together um, by you know seeking out the data that are available, grouping together in, in, in thematic groups and in, in organizations, etc. And even though you may not, most of us aren't technical uh, persons, but you uh, you can group together with, with people who are, and together you, you can actually move towards uh, making significant change uh, through the data. So I think that that's where we're heading, and I hope that's where we're heading. I'm gonna, you know, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see exactly how fast we can push that forward. Right. Well, so starting from where we are today, I think it's fair to say that the um, open data policy and, and the open data initiative in France is, is getting started with at, at least recognizable results at this stage. You know, we've published 350,000 something data sets. Uh, we've built this initiative with more than 30 major partners in innovation, from you know, Google to uh, uh, nonprofits and, and, uh, um, and, and, and uh, investors, schools, research institutions. Uh, they have, I think, more, more, more than, well, we have two cycles of, of, of this contest data connection that is encouraging uh, innovation based on open data, and two times six startups where, where um, recognized as, as being extremely useful to, to, to French citizens. I mean, things are, things are moving. Um, and the main challenge is how do we keep these things moving forward? At, at, at a certain level, um, the, the, the international community and, and what's, uh, what's happening right now on the global stage, and I'm, I'm referring specifically to the G8, for example, because the uh, British presidency of the, the uh, the, the G8 is especially keen on making advances on a, on a worldwide level um, over um, open data and open data policies. And this will keep the momentum flowing at, at the really the, the, the higher um, sort of high level political um, level uh, from inside government. And that's the second st set of, of stakeholders. Um, it is becoming more and more apparent that um, civil servants realize the value of open data because it makes their work easier to a certain extent, and also it makes it more visible, more understandable by citizens. So I think this is moving forward as well. My question is, how do we keep, uh, well, how do we build more support from the third set of stakeholders, meaning civil society, meaning uh, nonprofits, meaning um, di different civil society stakeholders who may not have heard of open data as a tool to help solve some of their issues? Would you, uh, would you include businesses and, in that by any chance? And well, that, that that's that's a well, yeah, civil society as a as a whole and businesses as well. Um, but that's that opens a, a, a whole set of other questions, which is how do um, civil society actors can make themselves more transparent as well? But even in order to keep the momentum going, I think uh, we need as much support as we can from the community and from uh, actors from civil society who may not have yet internalized the potential of open data in whatever field they're, they're working on. And I think that's the key to sustain success on this, on this side. Yeah, for me, there are like a, a major challenge. It's like to, to make people understand them to not trust the data and to stay critical, you know, and because we have a lot of data and things, but we have to understand more what is behind, what is the definition, you know. You speak to their data and it's pretty easy, like how much car pass on the street, but there are also data like criminality, you know. Uh, where the, the definition of criminality by them by himself can change from one president to another, or, and kind of like jump in the data and things. So for me, like that's that's a ma major challenge where things can go wrong sometimes, like because people trust number uh, too much. So it's a matter of like skills development. You would say it's yeah, as a society, data literacy is like a yeah, big exactly, thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and your other things I, I can see is like. Uh, when, when God opened their data, they were ready to 
they have to think about themselves a lot. They have to like say, okay, what we are doing? What what are our, what is the job we we need? Because when you say, okay, what are the data? You are, you have to say, okay, what is the process? Which data we have? And I think it's a good, very good opportunity to go to 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 know what they're doing because I think sometimes they they don't really don't know what they're doing. And it's for us to know what they're doing. Exactly. So. And, and so it's an opportunity to, to really improve uh, government, not only just because they show the data, but because they ask questions about themselves. Like, yeah, what, we do, what, what uh, is the job we're making? So, and, and open data is already used a lot inside the government, I think. Uh, and it's very quick. They are the first to use the data that Okay, great, thanks. So now we're going to open up the panel to the anyway. Um, does anybody have any questions, any comments they'd like to make, anything they'd like to say? Let me get the microphone. Can you introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Lionel. I'm a consultant in uh, public marketing and I work for a public organization uh, concerning transition and uh, especially the Grand Lyon, which uh, has just opened uh, big data, beta uh, website uh, last week. I'd like to know what are your relations with uh, public people, uh, with elective people? How do they react when you talk about uh, big data, open data, the utilization of data, especially because that people are old sometimes, very old, and even young people don't have the power right now to let them understand. And moreover, the last thing is that uh, data is the uh, power of politicians. So if you open it and you're smarter, it's very hard. So what are their opinions about that? Well, I guess uh, from my point of view, I, I think it's very uh, hard to generalize. Uh, I think you see a lot of... Um, uh, positivity from from the political side in, in across Europe uh, towards open open data altogether, but it's uh, it's really a long road, and I think we see also the opposite in many uh, in, in many areas. So I think it's uh, it's uh, it, it, it you know it, it requires in a country some people to to lead the way, some you know in, in politics um, to actually make this a, a, a like a priority, and if that happens, then. Uh, if you get the, the debate going, then it's often hard to 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 uh, counter that because open data is sexy, you know. And once you get it on the agenda, then you know, uh, and talking about how to create transparency and, and so on, it's really hard to argument against that. Um, so I think it's um, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to say in general. Maybe I can help you a little bit with that. Um, so I've been working. Um, in Open Data in France for about a year, and I have this term that I like to use when I talk to my friends. We call them like my open data heroes, because I feel like um, sometimes when you're, you're you're talking to you know the state or the region, people tend to look at things from a much more institutional perspective. But in fact, sometimes what you need to do is you need to find like those one or two or three allies that are inside that aren't really talking to people that are really really on board you can sort of make things happen and understand like how things work and you have like the like, um, like Christian said you have varying um, cultures right so like I've had the wonderful experience of working with the Conseil Regional of PACA and those guys are like totally on board with um, the open data bandwagon because of the Marseille Provence 2013 um, they're planning out like a lot of interesting cultural data, organizing a lot of events on the to topic. Yet de France has been extremely dynamic as well. And so what will happen is that you know a lot of the other regions, considering we're going to start looking about what, what's happening, they're going to want to talk to like that one or two or three you know open data heroes that help make it happen and see how they can um, do that. So there's like this notion I think of um, like collective information and collective knowledge that just needs to kind of be dispersed to help create a new culture with regards to openness. There are some things we forgot sometimes. It's like, I, think, I don't know France that much, the politicians. But in Switzerland, it's simply the law, like, uh, data of the gov have to be accessible. It's right at the moment. So, it's sometimes easier to open uh, you know, this new way than uh, 
in favor of the better people. Uh, the administration is sometimes also happy to sanctify the, the work. That, that's a kind of a stupid point, but that's the point I'm going to have them to do this then. Do you have any more questions? Okay, uh, hello everybody, I'm Julian, I'm a student, and I'd like two points, I'd like to not really rise because there, there, there's been rise already, but um, just a few more questions about that. First of all, I'm sorry, but I, I have to bring some semantical uh, semantic about that. Open does not mean accessible. Accessible does not mean usable. Uh, so I think maybe open government data which be possible with, I don't know, open knowledge schools, for instance. And uh, second point, I don't really agree with the fact that we could put business into the civil or into the civil society or what we could be called civil because um, we all contribute contribute sorry uh, to the society by different ways and one of those ways are taxes uh, I think business maybe in France uh, does not participate as much as citizen in by the way of taxes. So maybe it takes some politic, maybe it takes really some political empowerment before uh, data empowerment. I don't know. Yeah, okay, so, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to address the first one. Uh, to begin with, and uh, I, I agree. Uh, so, you know, as also discussed before, just making data open does not necessarily uh, make things better. We need to be able to use that data somehow, and how to do that is, is a big challenge. Uh, at OKF, one of the, the, the initiatives that we run is something called the School of Data, which is basically that what you're talking about, uh, bringing people uh, into a group and then figuring out how to actually approach this thing of, of uh, analyzing data. Um, that's aimed very much towards uh, journalists often because um, uh, you know data journalism is really uh, something that I think for many is, is uh, uh, you know difficult to approach but once you get uh, get your hand dirty then it really opens up a, a whole new avenue for you as a journalist of, of, of finding the, the, the kind of stories that, that, that you're looking for. Um, so I think you know more initiatives like that, and maybe that ties in with the whole uh, hackerspace, co-working space movement, to have uh, physical places where people actually gather to figure out how to work with data. And, and, and even though you're not uh, a tech person, then you can fairly easily uh, get on board with this and, and learn the basics, and, and I think that's, that's part of the solution. Um, yeah, maybe I'll answer someone else in regards to the second question. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? Also, just just a side note, in case anyone wants to ask a question in French, I can just translate. So. I, I don't want to be negative because I'm actually optimistic about all this stuff, but what are the things that will never happen? <laughs> I, I, I want to bring out the realist in you. Thank you. Maybe you can answer that since uh, we're tasked with making the impossible happen. <laughs> can, can you hear us, by the way? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think w one, of, one of the elements um, we all should keep in mind is that, I don't know how, how to put this well, but open data is, is, it, it is, it is as a general concept, extremely uh, seducing, but the, the reality of it is that it is a channel to um, publish information that is collected uh, that already exists uh, and that government collects in order to achieve its, its uh, objectives and its missions. Things with, uh, with which it's tasked uh, with and, um, and things that are extremely important for uh, our day-to-day -day lives, right? Security, um, you know, safety, um, making sure that the laws are enacted, making sure that uh, our finances are strong, making sure that people don't 
um, violate the law. I mean, there are all, all, all these very important uh, functions of government that um, it is designed uh, to support and to achieve. Um, government is not designed uh, to produce data sets. Uh, it will not turn into a giant API. <laughs> um, and, yes. and, and yet, <laughs> and, and what this means is that um, th that's a very important point. Because we, you also need to realize that for uh, innovators inside government who try to um, make this agenda move forward and who have to give realistic, achievable um, milestones to, to the, the elected leaders and, and make propositions that both carry some sort of vision for the future but are also um, feasible to, to, to enact and to, to put in practice, uh, we have to start somewhere and, and to... Uh, I guess stand on the shoulders of giants, as, as, as Newton would say, by making sure that what we do fits with the, the administrative and the legal and the, the sort of much less sexy reality of exactly how a government works. Uh, and uh, so speaking for France, but I'm sure it's the same for many countries throughout the world, uh, what we've done is basically start with the, the, the this, this law from 1978 that created the, the, the um, well, it, it's the right to access administrative documents, right? Just, just the name of that, that uh, freedom. It is not a Freedom of Information Act. It's a right to access administrative documents, uh, which in 1978 meant that you could knock on the door of the local government, you could ask to see the registers and have uh, fulfilled the right to access the document and see what's, what's there. Um, so, of course, that ha this had to be renewed for uh, the, the digital economy and... and uh, um, it had to take into account the sort of new, new potentialities of, of, of digital tools. So in 2003, the European Commission created this directive on public sector information reuse, right? Uh, but again, without getting into the technical and legal uh, implications of all this, what it means is that uh, there are some legal tools by which data sets are accessible. However, we have to really go the extra mile to try to make them accessible by default. And that is a voluntary commitment by the state, which means that it has to work within the existing framework. There are no new uh, specific budgets for this. There's no, there, are, there aren't any new laws, at least, that are being planned for right now. Um, so what this means is that uh, we have, in order to have as much data available as possible, we have to make it as easy to publish. And so we really make the raw data available. We try to go and find data sets, to find information systems, to find uh, studies where data has been collected, and make these specific data sets available to the public. Um, but the government won't turn uh, overnight, and even in the foreseeable future, into, machi into a machine that would produce data. I think that's one important thing to keep in mind. Sorry, Carlos. Um, maybe just to add to that, because I know there's someone in the community who is the um, the regulator um, in charge of basically protecting personal data. Um, I'm guessing one thing that will never happen, especially if they're in the group doing their job, is is that of course, like you know, the, 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 one of the limits to open data is the protection of you know human of of people, their personal their personal information. So the Obviously, the I guess right now people are so there's a big debate going on right now with regards to health data. So what we're saying is like we're talking about personal data, we're talking about open data, and where exactly one of those two starts and ends. Where are the boundaries that that hasn't been like it's not completely completely clear yet, but you know the necessary like debates are happening. Just for the record, uh, I I'd like to add to this. It's a very important point. Uh, it, it is, well, the, the law is very clear in the principles that it sets. But of course, the, the revolution that we've witnessed over the last 10, 15 years puts it into a completely new perspective. Uh, because there could be things that were just impossible to do earlier that may now happen if you're able to cross different data sets, for example. So we really have to approach both the notion of transparency and openness and the notion of protection of private information in a, in a new way. And uh, with a better, I guess, better knowledge of, uh, um, of of the tools that are available today. And so, one of the the, the aspects that you you uh, touched upon that Kat was mentioning um, was the idea that to move forward, the government on this specific agenda, uh, the government has decided to launch six debates, uh, which will be public debates on open data in a specific sector, which gives us a chance to really uh, engage and connect with the. The most um, 
relevant stakeholders in that category, for example, talking about health, it's impossible to do anything around health policy without at least having consulted uh, doctors, right, and, and health professionals and uh, uh, people in charge of of, um, uh, of social protection and health protection right entrances. Um, and this will be the same on the other the other topics as well. Transportation is, is a big one. Uh, environmental risks is extremely important as well. And then we go through like, the whole list. For all of these debates, one of the questions, of course, will be where uh, can we set the limits uh, in a safe manner um, so, so as to discriminate what is uh, and what should be open data and what, what is constitutive of this uh, freedom of, of, of at least access to information. Uh, and uh, where do we have to be absolutely, absolutely uh, um, extremely strong about protecting private information uh, in a way that does not uh, either endanger privacy or, on the other hand, uh, limit transparency too much. So these are the sort of very technical questions that have to be dealt with, but I, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with, with uh, the team on that uh, topic. Okay, we've got a question. Oh, okay. Uh, one thing too is like uh, government can have like uh, some tricks to not open the data. For example, if you look at uh, France and the uh, energy debate, actually, um, like nuclear power is, is, is a private company, and so there are no way to to you know to access those data. And that's some things like you know never going to happen. Then if the spirit is not there. They can always like say, okay, we we find a tree, we make a private company work for the government, and so they, you have no right to have to do those data. Well, that, that, that's a trick that's slightly limited because if, if elected representatives want to pass a law saying that in certain domains, uh, uh, certain data sets should be available. Again, again, this yeah, is yeah. we're talking about the, the the current situation as it as it is, and uh, all of open data in France is built on this law from 1978. Uh, again, may, maybe one of the conclusions, and it is not uh, it is not uh, fall, fall upon me to make such conclusions, but one of the one of the things that are uh, appearing uh, and becoming clearer is that there needs to be more uh, engage, engagement with civil society in general and citizens around this notion of transparency. And maybe at some point, Parliament, the Parliament itself, uh, will will have to make, uh, I guess, proposals as to how can we can we best use these these tools to drive change in public policies. We had a question in the back. Hello, I'm Laura. I work for this association called the 27th Region in uh, Paris. Uh, my question is, um, do you think that setting up, uh, from your experiences, a uh, database or a platform or system in a government could also change not only the relation between the government and the public, but also the way the administration works in itself internally and kind of implement a culture of uh, open source or transversality? Do you have any uh, examples of uh, governments that have changed after that? Um, I think that's a bit too soon to say, actually. Um, but I do think that uh, seeing how many uh, open data portals uh, is, is coming forward in, in, you know, across Europe, I think that, that there's a willingness to change things. So even if we can't necessarily uh, um, conclude anything at this point in time, I still think that that willingness alone holds a promise uh, towards um, uh, you know uh, within politics and within uh, governance that you want to do better. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about this. I think so. Um, it should be interesting to see, of course, in a few years. And it's hard to say, you know. At, uh, when will we reach a, 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 a critical mass and, and actually start to see results and change of policy and and uh, like real um, like economic growth coming exactly from open data? Uh, but I, I think the promise is there, and that, I think that's good enough for me um, because uh, I, I think that's uh, that's encouraging, that's motivating. Uh, Maybe to that I'd just like to add that like when we talk about open data portals, like there's no like generic open data portal. We can't like have let's say different spaces, different regions open up like open data portals and all imagine that, you know, this something's gonna happen. But there's actually quite a lot that goes into design. Um, this is a conversation we've been having a lot with at the lab lately, because uh, I don't know if any of you are aware of this, but they just launched this kind of cool initiative called 
um, co-designed Data Pongo Fair, which basically involves a team of students, and a team of students um, mostly working in engineering, um, doing kind of like consultation rounds and talking to people um, about how to redesign the, the data portal to make it better. And they so they spoke to me, and I'm like, yo, like I have no technical knowledge whatsoever. I cannot tell you like how to code this thing. But they're like, yeah, but we're actually engineers, and so that's the part that we've been thinking about. But the part that we haven't been thinking about is, well, for an ecosystem, what would it take from a technical perspective? What would it take to really make open data thrive, to really get it reused, to start conversations, things like that? What do you think? So um, I think that the issue is like a lot of open data portals up to now have been designed as a bit of a one-way street, as you just call them. And now the issue is not just like getting open data portals, but making sure that they're designed to really like engage conversation and um, collaboration with the ecosystems that are relevant. It's a very, very good point and thanks for reminding me of my, uh, <laughs> of my duties on this. I should, have, uh, I, I should mention that, that no, this is a very, very interesting point. I need to conclude what we're um, saying here, but data.gov.fr is uh, the, the national government's uh, portal uh, tasked with, with uh, publishing and making those data sets available, but uh, it is not the government's platform. It is your platform. It is our platform. Um, and I, I strongly believe in, in citizens' empowerment uh, th through sharing and making data sets available uh, for uh, all the impacts it can, ha it can have on government transparency and on, on what we described uh, earlier, which is the fact that with, with these data sets and with uh, knowledge, uh, people can, can really impact uh, different policies that, that, uh, through, through which they're, they're touched. And uh, so data, co-design data.gov.fr is an initiative that we launched a few weeks ago uh, that will go on until the month of June. Uh, the first phase is uh, about to, to, uh, to, to close. And that was a phase, that is a phase through which we're trying to collect as much uh, as possible um, of, of um, as many um, contributions as possible from users or potential users of the platform. So please feel free to go to etalab.gov.fr. It's e t a l a b dot g o u v dot f r. Uh, look at the the, the process. Uh, following up on the call for um, for contributions, there will be um, at least four or five six uh, workshops on different topics, uh, and specifically the topics that will have emerged from the contributions. Hence. Uh, and, and that's the reason why it's so important uh, for all of you who have some, something at stake to, to really uh, let it be known and, and tell us what you're, what you're expecting from the other group of all. And uh, through these workshops and this process of consultation, we hope to improve, uh, well, to collaboratively um, design the um, sort of uh, specifications for the next version of the platform, which we'll start working on at the end of June. So again, thank you very much. If you can, uh, if you can help us, uh, help us help you. Okay, so before we wrap up, I'm just going to do the final round for commercials. So we have our data for one um, on Saturday. If you have the time, um, the Open Knowledge Foundation, the Democracy Ouvert, they're organizing Goof Camp. Um, do you want to like say a couple of sentences on that? Do you want to do you want to do like a okay? So it's going to be at the canteen. It's going to be all day long. It's basically. Hard. I think we don't want to define it too much. Okay. Because it's, it's like a camp, it's like the end of the ID, okay. but it's going to be like design. So, yeah, so basically, that very cool intersection between politics and government. And um, so, Christian and I are both with the Open Knowledge Foundation. Um, if anyone's ever interested, you can get in touch. There are like chapters like all over the world. Um, the one in France, like, like one of the co founding members, Peter, is also in the room if you want to ask him any questions. Um, we, we, we haven't been around very long. We've been around since November, pretty much, and really more solid, more active since December, but there's some interesting things going on, so if you're interested, you can get in touch. So thank you, everybody, for coming, for listening, for engaging with us, and uh, we'll see you soon.